Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always glad to have you with us. So today, we're gonna do a how-to video as sort of a continuation. Several weeks ago, for the Tandy 1000HX, we did a day in the life video where we had somebody prepare a sales presentation and draft a document for release of that presentation. And as a part of that video, we actually saw usages of Telnet and FTP. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set that up as well as email using the Mutt email client, using a Raspberry Pi, and using the Tandy 1000HX to connect in. So let's get right to it. Uh, first off, let's take a few minutes and let me show you how to configure the Raspberry Pi and the MTCP client that we're going to be using to connect. And we're gonna do that on my virtual machine. So we'll do that first and then we'll hop on over to the Tandy and get that all configured. At this point, we have two things we need to do on our modern computer. First, configure the Raspberry Pi, and second, configure our target system, which in this case will be the Tandy 1000HX. I'll put a link in the description below to some directions I've put online in my Git repository, and that's actually what we're looking at right here. Uh, with, this basically has some sample files in it for configuring the system, as well as a link back to this channel. So there you have it. Oh, also a link to the most excellent MTCP project that we'll be using as a part of this demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate into the Raspberry Pi directory, and you can see three files here uh, for purposes of setting up the Pi. I've already downloaded these, so I'm gonna go ahead at this point and minimize the browser and open up uh, TextPad where I have these particular files laid out. So what we're going to do at this point is actually open an SSH session to the Raspberry Pi. And to do this, I'm using the infamous PuTTY program. So now that we're in here, we can go ahead and install our FTP server, install our Telnet server, and our MUT client. We'll go ahead and start with the FTP server. To do that, I'm just going to copy commands out of the window you see on the right. The FTP server is now installed. Let's go ahead and configure it. Once again, following the commands that you see on the right. Now for this configuration, we actually want to go ahead and look for the various lines that you see in the file. So now that I've loaded nano, I'm going to do a control W and search for anonymous enable. There it is, already set to no, so we're good there. Next up is local enable, which is right below it, already set to yes. Next, we have write enable, which we needed to uncomment there, which we have done. Next, we have local umask. We'll go ahead and uncomment that. And finally, we have cheroot local user, which I think is closer to the top. We'll go ahead and search on that using that control W command like I did, and we'll uncomment that. With that, we should be good for most of the settings uh, that were previously in the file. Now we get to add just a few settings to the end of the file, and that would be this user subtoken and local root. So let's go ahead and add those. With that, we're all set with the configuration file here, so I'm gonna do Control X and Y, and Enter. Excellent. Next, we get to make a couple of directories here to allow our Pi user to be able to access FTP. I'll go ahead and do the first make dir command here that you see on the right. We'll do the second one, and we'll do some permission setting up as well. So we'll go ahead and say not, not allow everybody to write to this directory, uh, but our Pi user will be able to. At this point, we can go ahead and restart the service, and we can give this a quick test. To test this, I'm just going to use the Microsoft FTP client. Let's see what directory we're in. Um, Let's see here, system 32. <laughs> Let's do a local directory change to uh, DOS utils, which is my uh, repository here. And now we can go ahead and open Raspberry Pi, log in as our Pi user and put in our password. Perfect, log in successful. If we do a DIR, we'll see there are some files there so we can change that files directory. And now we can go ahead and put a file. In this case, I'll just see if I can put the readme. Markdown file that should exist in the root of this folder. Indeed, that was successful. We can do a DIR and we can see that that file is now there. Perfect. 
Uh, so now let's just go ahead and exit out of FTP by typing buy, as you saw me type, and we've confirmed that the FTP server is all set to go. Excellent. Next up, let's go ahead and do the Telnet server. This one is really, really tough. One command, sudo apt get install Telnet D. That's it. With the Telnet server installed, we can go ahead and test it. So let's type Telnet and see what happens. Say open Raspberry Pi. Log in as Pi. Put in the password. And we're in. We can go to that files directory that we looked at for the FTP if we wanted to. And we should see some files that are in there as well. So there you have it. I think it's FTP and then files. And lo and behold, there's that readme document that we uploaded earlier. So perfect. Telnet is working great. Next, we're going to install MUT. Following the commands over here, the first thing we're actually going to do is install Vim. And now we can go ahead and install MUT. With Vim and MUT installed, we'll go ahead and configure it. And in our case, we're going to configure it for a Gmail account. Uh, this most excellent Medium article that you see at the top link here is a great source for configuring with Gmail. If you have a different provider, I'm sure there's something on the internet that you could follow for that. So we'll proceed to go ahead and make this directory here, as well as this directory here. And finally, we're gonna touch this certificates file in that group. Next, we'll go ahead and create a mutrc file, and we'll just use nano to go ahead and edit that. What you're going to want to do is customize this for your particular Gmail account. Uh, as much as I like you guys, I'm not going to be uh, editing all of this uh, in real time since, uh, well, uh, I don't really want to give out my Gmail password. <laughs> I do like you guys, though. Uh, but uh, you can go ahead and put in your username, your password, and there's a couple of other areas to configure in here, such as the from address and the from name. We'll go ahead and fill that in. And basically, you can configure everything else, do a control X and Y, and save the file. And one thing I don't know if I showed explicitly, make sure you set that SMTP URL as well, because that's also set uh, to your username. I've highlighted over here on the right. You also want to make sure you set that accordingly. With the MUT client configured, we can now go ahead and launch MUT. At this point, Gmail is going to be screaming at you. And that's where the next step comes into mind, where you need to actually go into Gmail and turn on the ability to allow less secure apps. You'll probably get an email that'll say this or some sort of a notification as a push that says, hey, you've tried to log into a less secure account. So there you have it. Here you can see my Gmail inbox full of years old messages. I actually don't use my Gmail account that often. We can go ahead and send a new message. I'm gonna hit the M key for mail. And we will send this to the Tandy account with the subject of test. And here we have Vim launched. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom at the I key and say, hello, hope you are well. Thanks, Chris. And at this point, you can hit escape or control C or whatever is configured. I find control C works and then do a shift colon WQ to save that message. Then from there, we have an attachment to our email. And all we have to do is hit the Y key and it'll send. And then to get out, we can hit Q and we have left MUT. So there you have it. We have the FTP server, the Telnet server, and MUT all configured. Next up, we're going to configure MTCP. You can see on screen here some directions that I've put together for configuring MTCP in its various configuration files. These are all examples. You'll probably need to tweak them a little bit depending upon your network, depending upon the type of Ethernet card you're using, et cetera, et cetera. Now, these directions are available in my Git repository. As you can see here, once again, link is in the description. And at this point, we've actually navigated to the target system directory. And the file that you saw open a minute ago was here. And we also have a variety of sample files under here. The goal is going to be to create some sort of a directory that we can copy over to the Tandy 1000. In this case, we're gonna go with MTCP files. 
And then from there, we just need to copy it over to the Tandy. So first thing we need to do, in my case, is actually get our packet drivers. And I've demonstrated how to do that in past videos. Uh, for this particular card, I'm going to go to Vogons, download this PE3.zip file. There it is downloaded. I've actually downloaded it before, so we have an underscore one now. I'm going to go back to my desktop, go to the MTCP directory that I have to the target system directory and just paste it in here. And we can go ahead and just right click. And in my case, I'm using Unix extract. I'm going to extract this to a subdirectory. And now we'll have that there. So under this PE3 folder, which I'm going to take and rename to Zircom, there's also a packet driver folder. And then there is the particular packet driver. So I'm going to take this and we're going to go back even one more level take the Zircom directory and move it back to this directory here. And then finally into that MTCP files, because as I noted earlier, that's going to be my destination for everything. All right. Step one, done. We've taken our packet driver and I've actually configured auto exec bat already here with that particular line in it. That's in the sample files geared towards a Zircom pocket uh, ethernet adapter. All right. Next, we need to download MTCP, which I've already done. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and unzip that to a subdir as well. And I'm just going to rename it. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go into it and I'm going to do a control A and a control X to copy everything and then go into the MTCP directory we have here and just paste it in there. So there you have it. Now that's all together. And I'll come up here and delete this top level here. And also to prevent confusion, I'm also going to delete the zip file. Perfect. Next up is creating this configuration file under the MTCP directory called tcp.cfg. Once again, that sample file is already available as it was in my Git repo, and that's where I started with here. So there it is, all set up. You may need to configure your IP address, NetMask, and gateway and name server accordingly. I've usually found that setting the name server to my router works well. Picking an IP address with this last octet in the same ranges my router that's not already in use works well. And typically packet drivers are going to init on port 60. If yours init's on another port, you would need to change that as well. So that's tcp.cfg. And the next thing we're going to do is create a file called config.bat to set an environment variable for using that tcp.cfg. So we're going to have our config.bat, once again, available in my Git repository. If we look at that, you can see it's the one line that you see there. Next up would be creating a telnet.bat file, once again, in my Git repo, so we won't go load that. But this is basically calling the config file and calling the MTCP telnet file, or uh, executable. And then finally, we want to do the same for FTP. Once again, a batch file to call config.bat and then call the FTP executable. So there you have it. That's all the configuration I have for MTCP. And since I started with my Git repo and just unzipped everything and put it into that directory, all we need to do now is copy these two directories in this one file over to the Tandy. And let's resume with that. So now over to the Tandy 1000, and I've actually jumped ahead and already copied the files to the Tandy. I'll show you what we've done here, and I'll also show you how I fed in the auto exit back configuration changes. Uh, since I do have a multi-boot auto exec bat configured on the system. So here you can see the MTCP directory with all the various batch files that we created as well as the configuration file. And I'm just going to flip over here. I also do have a Zircom directory on here. And we'll have a look at autoexec.bat. And here if we look in autoexec.bat, we can see that we have a line here for a packet. And that look should, should look very similar to what we had over on the virtual machine, where we configured this to call the Zircom Packet Drive PE3PD directory. So the only thing we have left to do now is to reboot and see everything in action. All right, we're going to choose option number three, which is DOS with Packet Driver. I think the mouse driver will go ahead and load and we'll be prompted for the date. And after we put this in, we'll actually see the Zircom configuration flash by. 
I'll see if I can pause it here. So pocket ethernet adapter three with that particular configuration on uh, port or interrupt 60, I guess it is, and ethernet address as well. At this point, we'll go ahead and load up MenuWorks. But I'm gonna exit out of there so that I can show you, despite the fact that I have Telnet and FTP set up here, that we can run them from the command line. All right, so going into the MTCP folder, uh, we can then go ahead and run telnet.bat and make sure you do .bat, otherwise it's gonna call the executable. And if it calls the executable, then the configuration won't get loaded. So we'll go ahead and do telnet.bat. And we're now connected to the Raspberry Pi. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and type mutt and go into our email client. And just like we saw on the virtual machine, there's a bunch of emails from years ago. Perfect. Excellent. I'm gonna type exit to come out of Telnet. And I do wanna point one thing out that I didn't talk about yet. And that is in my batch file, I'm actually assuming that the name of the Raspberry Pi is Raspberry Pi. If your Raspberry Pi is not named Raspberry Pi, you would need to change this to something else. So that's just something worth noting. And the same is also true for ftp.bat, if we look at that. So also, once again, assuming Raspberry Pi. So there you have it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, upload a file via FTP. So I'm gonna go ahead and type ftp.bat, and that'll load the FTP program, and we can put in our username, put in our password, and now we're in the server. So we can do a dir, change into that files directory, and we can put, let's put the, let's put the telnet.bat file, why not? Done. So now if we look in here, we can see the readme file that we uploaded when we were on the virtual machine, and we can see telnet.bat. Bye-bye. There we go, and we're out. So, folks, it's really that simple. Yeah, simple. There you go. Well, at least we have the steps. Uh, so that's pretty much the story. FTP, telnet, and mutt client all configured and accessible from the lovely Tandy. So there you have it. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching. Uh, certainly do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, click that notification bell to get notified of upcoming videos. If you liked what you saw today, please do give us a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. That'll help us decide what sort of content we make in the future. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.